Shame! Chesterton talking about witchcraft, writing on fairy tales, says that at the heart of black magic is a mystical hatred of the idea of childhood. And think about how important, how central abortion is as one of the pillars holding up what's been termed the culture of death now. It's their it sacrament. It's the left sacrament. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. And this is why we've got sex is supposed to be about life, generating children. And then the roles of masculinity and femininity are about caring for children within the context of the family. Once you take away that ultimate end of sex and sever what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, um, from what it means to be a father or a mother, sex ends up being now about death. This is what it is. So you get that pleasure without the responsibility. And if a new life comes in the way, well, we just murder it, which is what abortion is. So support for fornication, unmarried sex, and support for abortion have always gone hand in hand. And if you look at the statistics in the 1960s, 70s, when they started keeping records, abortions just skyrocket because mm -hmm. kids are seen as an inconvenience. And it's the same thing in Falling Rome as well. Uh, the, the one point I just wanted to make really quickly is what the sexual revolution has done is it has trained people to see the other human being with whom they are having the most intimate possible relationship another human being can have as a mere thing to use. And once people, particularly someone who you're supposed to have that level of intimacy with to be doing that with them, when they are just an object who can be used and discarded, then of course an unborn child is just an object that can be discarded. That's the liberal paradigm of seeing yourself as an autonomous individual fundamentally disconnected from family mm. and you get to make your own life or you do you as they say whereas the catechism says that it's the family not the individual that's the fundamental social unit so of course anything that infringes on your autonomy is going to be seen as an inconvenience you want that pleasure but you don't want the connection that it involves and the self-sacrifice that it involves absolutely so i want to go back to what you were saying about ancient rome were, were you describing sort of like a an abortion uptick in ancient rome yeah really terrible excavations show that you had sewers where the bodies of babies had been discarded, sometimes piled up like 200 high. They were also left in the streets for animals to eat. And many women died because of makeshift home abortions as well. Various kinds of herbs and concoctions or mechanical instruments as well. And this was a big problem. Uh, Tacitus records that during the final years of Rome, childlessness prevailed. And many women did not want to risk losing their looks as they saw it due to the duties of motherhood. Sound familiar? R slash child free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. And the, the men too avoided marriage. So you get Augustus basically asking, look, guys, how can we hope to preserve the Commonwealth mm -hmm. if we're not going to take on the duties of fathers and procreate? What do we expect to happen? One of the things about tyranny, and this is an important point that people miss, we look at tyranny in terms of the material, in terms of the concrete rules, and not so much the spiritual aspect of it, but it's fundamentally anti-intimacy, and it's fundamentally pro-pessimism. So we have a very tyrannical culture in the sense that people are afraid of opening up to other people about their values because they don't want to get shouted down. They don't want that person to repeat what they've said. So everyone being afraid of having their statements used against them does create a, a culture which is very low trust. You don't want to have conversations with people about anything. And then you also never know who really agrees with you about things. And there is a pessimism there. And furthermore, the more isolated you become, the more pessimistic you become, 
the less willing you are to do anything that would challenge the existing social order, because of course you're just going to lose. So fall in line. Yes. St. Augustine says somewhere that we, it's in the city of God, we detect weakness in a mind that cannot bear the stupid opinion of the mob or physical hardship. And I think that's really interesting insight because Mm. what he's saying is that cancel culture only really works in a society that is already weak and hasn't got the spiritual strength, hasn't got the spine to actually say the truth and accept tough consequences. So it's a symptom rather than a cause, I think. And it's that really deep pessimism that the only thing you can do is just get laid and get paid. That's what the bottom line of liberalism is. And you see people who might earn a lot of money, but are still crushingly depressed because human yeah. beings are made for more than that. And now, believe since, it or not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since the 1950s or so, um, real incomes have gone up by about four or five times, but depression has gone up tenfold minimum and is now the leading cause of disability in the Western world. Depression is responsible for the most missed days of work. And the biggest killer of young men, age 18 to 45, suicide. Yeah. But we're wealthier than ever. 